I'm Dave Baker. And I'm Andrew Price. Welcome to Deep Cuts, the podcast where we pick a topic and walk you through the ins, the outs, and the nitty gritty, so you can appear like an interesting and idiosyncratic person at your next forced social function. Today's topic is... James Heydrich. Who was James Heydrich? Well, he's a martial arts master and a purveyor of the most supreme 1970s bowl cut you've ever seen, as well as a psychic with powers beyond the earthly realm. He's also a charlatan, a liar, and a sexual deviant. So, you know, today's episode is going to be a joy to record. magic of the hand. Humanity has always had a lust for the supernatural, whether it be a religious experience, a paranormal sighting, or a witnessing of entities beyond our solar system. We've always had a deep hunger within us to experience something more than ourselves, and by doing that, being anointed in some special way. It usually does always come back to that, a desire to be perceived as a unique, intricate, beautiful being, a prophet, a harbinger, a demigod, which is exactly what the subject of today's episode suffered from. A severe overcorrection from a life lived in the shadow of pain and cruelty. James Heydrich was born in South Carolina on February 28, 1959, to a 30 year old father and a teenage mother. Remember that. It's going to be obvious why it's important. Heydrich's childhood was not a happy one. He claims that he was routinely locked in a closet and abused and hit repeatedly in the head. His father was the main culprit of this theater of the unseen. This early childhood trauma had a severe impact on Heydrich. He would repeatedly say later in his life that he didn't remember much of his childhood because of it. And also, depending on the day of the week you're talking to him, it might also have contributed to his burgeoning psychic powers. He confessed in an interview in 1989 that he learned martial arts at the age of six in order to protect himself from his father's rage after one of his brothers was beaten to death. Jesus Christ. Yep. That's super dark. If if that's true, that's incredibly dark. But also, there's part of it that's kind of funny in that he skips right to like, it's not like, oh, like, my father is a horrible, abusive asshole. I'm going to learn how to defend myself. I'm going to learn, you know, I'm going to learn to fight. I'm going to learn to box or I'm just going to learn how to throw a punch. He's like, my father is a horrible, abusive asshole. He beat my brother to death. I am going to learn the way of the ancient martial arts of the eastern lands like he's like he goes full like he's it's he's the 1970s version of that meme of like while you were out drinking while you were out gallivanting and having sex i was studying the sword yeah 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 after this happened he and his surviving siblings lived in a series of foster care homes so basically after um high school james hydrick kind of bums around for a little while And then he starts getting more and more interested in martial arts. Um, I've never actually been able to find where he studied martial arts. I don't know that he actually did study martial arts. But in the 70s, he opened James Heydrich's Institute of Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, And um, yeah, it's what you think it is. It's a kind of wildly problematic karate dojo. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I highly doubt that he studied martial arts in any in any kind of like official way like he might have like went to a couple like classes and like read some books but i i highly doubt that he went through like rigorous martial arts training you know in a lot of ways like the i mean obviously we've talked about this on previous episodes but there was this huge boom in the 70s of these like number one like martial arts and kung fu got like really popular it exploded in popularity in in movies and and in our you know popular culture and all these karate and uh and kung fu dojos just like popped up it became this cottage industry where these people would just like you know they would go study martial arts in in whatever country and they would come back and start a dojo just like some white dude who would just like make a bunch of money off of it it was just like a literal you know just a the de- the definition of a grift um because their their actual skills and abilities would sort of vary in in like legitimacy or quality um but they were just capitalizing off of this craze that happened and then also simultaneously there was this huge boom in these like charlatan 
grifter, like public figures who are like, I'm this master martial artist or like I'm a psychic or I'm, you know, a, a spiritual medium. There was this, this huge boom of it. And, you know, the, it's interesting because simultaneously you kind of couldn't really get away with it anymore today because of the just the massive connectivity of the world. Everybody's connected. Everyone can communicate. Uh, it's really things can travel fast. You can, you know, one person can quickly, you know, tell everybody else that somebody's a fraud. You go out there and you present yourself and then somebody you went to elementary school with can like post a TikTok video about how your your whole thing is bullshit. Like it's really hard to get away with these things. But, you know, people are grifters in different ways. And, you know, what James Heydrich was just reminds me a lot of, you know, it's it's like the the evolution of what he did back then is, you know, we can kind of see it today where the, the equivalent of it now are, you know, these people that. You know, they just they pretend like they these conspiracy theorists who pretend like they have some kind of insider knowledge of things, you know, the Alex Joneses of the world or even like the lower hanging fruit of like just these random like conspiracy theorist influencers on Twitter and things like that, where they just make up bullshit. It's all made up. And then they they build these followings around these people who believe that they they know the truth. And it's the evolution of that, because you kind of can't disprove it you can't disprove conspiracy theories so it's it's like the internet proof grift because nobody can really disprove you in like a post-truth society where you're just appealing to people's emotional um desires um but it but it reminds me a lot of of that so i i totally do not believe that james heydrich has any martial arts training um so i've got some images here that i want to go over with you um, this first image is an exterior shot of James Heydrich's Shaolin uh, Kung Fu Dojo in uh, in in Salt Lake City, Utah. What does this What does this look like to you, Andrew? It's a storefront on a little you know side street corner. Looks like any typical like karate dojo that you'd see. You know, there's like a million of them out here. Like karate is like super popular in Burbank. Like if you're a kid and you live in Burbank, you're in karate. And there's so there's a million of them out there. And it looks just like that. It's pretty pretty nondescript, nondescript and unassuming. Um, it's got an old car out in the front of it. It's got like the, the wall is like a brick wall. And then it's just got like a little door and then like a window that has like a Chinese dragon art, like a like a art print or whatever hanging inside of it. And uh, on the top of it, it just says James Heydrich's Institute of Shaolin Kung Fu, just, you know, kind of painted out in like pretty basic letters. I just want to emphasize that the signage is possessive. James Heydrich's with an apostrophe Institute of Shaolin Kung Fu. All right. So uh, now we have a flyer that he was handing out in the uh, Salt Lake City area um, that basically is the kind of rates and um, the class structures of what he was offering do you want to you want to just quickly kind of go through this uh yeah so it's just like it's like typed like black text typed onto just like a plain white page there's no graphics or anything kind of interesting about it and it says martial arts instruction instruction in the martial art form of wushu gung fu will be available through the salt lake athletic club beginning immediately Learn the physical and mental techniques of self-defense, which place you in command of both your mind and your body. Basic goals. 1. Improve body flexibility, agility, balance, and strength through stretching, weightlifting, isometrics, and other exercises. 2. Improve mentally, striving to match the essence of the mind to that of the body through power training, sparring, katas, meditation, and adrenaline control. Which is misspelled. Yeah, it's adre uh, adrenaline. Um... Uh, training will include hand and kicking techniques, as well as techniques utilizing various oriental weapons. Fees. Members, $5 per lesson. Non-members, $10 per lesson. Private lessons can be arranged. Each lesson will last approximately one and a half hours. Groups will be arranged to receive instruction on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Enroll now at the spa office. Instructor, James A. Heydrich. So the cover of this little zine is... Um, uh, a yin yang symbol, um, and it says Shaolin Gung Fu, Inst the Institute of Shaolin Gung Fu, James A. Hydrix, possessive. Um, and then the address and the slogan 
is using no way as way, having no limitation as limitation. And then this is where it gets hilarious to me. So this is a separate flyer uh, that has a giant drawing of a dragon on the front. And it says James Hydrix Institute, but it's not possessive. It's James Hydrix, just with an S, Institute. The James Hydrix Institute has the largest and most well-known equipped martial arts studio in the Intermountain West. Our instructors are highly trained professionals to ensure that you will become a better person, both physically and mentally. Through our course, you will build up your self-confidence, have more vitality, and lose that unwanted weight. Our classes are held six days a week, Monday through Friday, from 4.30 to 6 p.m., and from 6.30 to 8 p.m., plus Saturday mornings and blah, 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 other times. Uh, if you have any more questions about our program, please inquire at, and then the location. But it's just hilarious to me that he changed the name to not be possessive anymore. It's his, he like, either he didn't realize that he needed a possessive comma or a apostrophe, or he just rebranded it the James Hydrix Institute. It, it, both of them are funny to me. Yeah, which is weird because it's like his name is James Hydrick. So he just changed his name to Hydrix. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Um, was it were his classes supposed to be was that was it like an all ages thing or was it supposed to be for like for kids? Uh, no, they're all ages. Like there's videos of him teaching adults and teaching kids. Oh, OK, because I was like I was like, what little kid is like worrying about losing unwanted weight? Well, like eight year old kids like, man, I really got to I really got to trim some of this belly fat. <laughs> Simultaneously, James discovered his true calling, becoming a psychic warrior. He began to put on shows displaying his seemingly inexplicable ability to move objects and rotate stationary things with his mind. It's easy to guess why someone would want to do this, why someone would attempt to draw this amount of attention to themselves, but let's just let the man talk for himself. But like my parents would lock me in a closet and they'd lock the door so I couldn't come out because I was supposed to embarrass them. In that closet, I'd close my eyes and I'd actually picture things coming up. I'd picture myself being in a big, huge house or a mansion, monastery in China somewhere. And uh, it's I actually, it seems like something like astral projection. It seems like I was actually there. And I could actually physically hear things taking place. And I'd go into the sand, hear a dong, boom. And then when I'd appear, everybody would bow to me, and I'd be welcome to come in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so sad when you hear him talking about that, where he's just so blatantly been mistreated and abused and is having dissociative episodes to try and cope with it. And this idea of him becoming a psychic is his way of trying to escape that. Yeah, you see, you see the natural you see the natural progression of this whole thing right away. Where you know this whole the whole trajectory just makes tons of sense and is totally in line with other you know other uh, I mean cult leaders I, mean, I he's not he's not a cult leader um, but you know there's a there's a there's an overlap or a crossover but like cult leaders and people who seek to gain power and influence through charlatanism and um, deception where you know they they've they've experienced and gone through some kind of formative trauma. They were abused or mistreated or neglected by their parents as a kid, or they didn't have parents. And in some way, you know, they, they experienced this ultimate trauma as, as a child. And then, you know, when he gets older, you can see that, um, you know, the, the attempt at creating these, these dojos, uh, it's like that first attempt at, at like, I want to be, I want to be accepted and not only do I want to be accepted, but I want to have power and influence. I want to be important in this way that I never was. I, I lived an entire childhood where everything that about me, everything that I said, did and wanted was deprioritized within my family dynamic. Um, nothing that I cared about or wanted or thought or felt was important to anybody around me. So I want to be important. And not just important in, in the sense of like being appreciated by people around me, but like I want to be like I, I'm going to go to the other end of the spectrum and I want to be like revered and thought of as this leader and thought of as this like authority figure, you know, even if I don't necessarily have the equipping or the drive or the um, the talent or the skill 
to be an authority figure in any kind of way. Like, what is it that I would be an authority figure of? Why would I be, why would I have influence and power and be respected and revered? So you kind of take shortcuts with that and you create these things of like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be a martial artist. I'm going to start a dojo and I'm going to have people who, you know, because they are, they don't know anything about martial arts because they have, you know, to them, you know, they, they don't know the difference between somebody who's genuinely skilled in martial arts and somebody who's not. I can kind of get away with making people think that I'm an expert on something. Um, and we, you know, we might know some people in real life that, you know, have similar like trajectories in that way of just like, you know, building power and influence through within a crowd, within a group of people that just don't kind of know any better. And you're kind of taking advantage of them and making them think that you have more expertise than you do to gain that power and influence. But then once you do that, it's kind of, it's not enough because it's like, what's you're, you're, you, you, you get a taste for that. And you're like, this isn't enough. I don't want to just be like respected by a bunch of like random, like kids and Pete and like women who are looking to defend themselves against muggers in Salt Lake city, Utah. I want to go to the next stage, but I can't like, I can't like, I'm not actually a, a, a martial art master. So if I tried to like open up like a chain of dojos across the country or if I tried to like go out there and like be an act like join competitions and be an actual martial arts master and fight people, I would lose. I, I like people would realize I was a fraud immediately. So now the next stage is I'm going to pivot off into this other direction that's a little le- a little more abstract, a little less, a little harder to debunk or a little uh, it, it's. I don't have to like prove my skill in such a direct way. So I'm going to become a spiritual medium or a psychic or something that's like really nebulous and you can't really prove it. And it's, you know, you're, you're more of a confidence man than you are a, um, you know, a, a, having skill in something like, like martial arts. Um, and, and that, 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 that pipeline is like so common because of that very specific paradigm of like, I want to have power and influence. I get a little taste of it in this very specific way of taking advantage of people who just don't know any better. But if I want to up my game, I have to pivot to something that's less provable, like being a psychic. Uh, I mean, and it's it's so sad. Like you can see exactly where this guy's pressure points and where his sadness is and how he's trying to manipulate people to into like shunting positive energy into himself um yeah that that awe of like oh my god did you just move that pencil wow you're so special and unique wow i love you wow this is amazing like it's so so just transparent let's let's watch this clip of him on this tv show from the 70s which is just a perfect illustration of what we're talking about develop the psychic power what did this uh, martial arts arts training do for you i mean well it teaches you to recognize yourself inner and outer self to reach the fourth level of consciousness matching the absence of the mind to the motions of the body and you say that we all have this power. Everyone has it. And each of us could develop it. Absolutely. Now, you are going to demonstrate this psychic power on That's My Life. Yes. What are you going to do, James? I'm going to move a pencil for you. With just psychic powers? Just psychic powers. Very well. Here's a pencil, James. Show us. He's making a fist. He's placed a pencil on a table at the edge of it. And then he's kind of like moving his hands he's sort of like feigning this concentration he's like staring at it intently but he keeps shaking his head like he's going through some kind of painful process and he's lost in meditation and he's like moving his hands in these sort of pseudo mystical ways and you know attempting to move the pencil and then he does it he's crouched down and he shifts his weight as he shifts his weight the the pencil like moves it, it twists on the table. I was going to say, it's it's interesting once you kind of learn his trick of like how he's doing it. It's pretty fascinating because he's so adept at it that it's it's really not. A, I mean, to me, it's not apparent that that is what he's doing. Like, I mean, obviously, I don't really believe in psychic uh, telekinetic abilities. Um, that's not even necessarily true. I, I'm open to the idea that we could do that. But I definitely believe that a guy wearing a dollar store gi with a Prince Valiant haircut isn't that guy. Yeah, that's that's that dovetails really well into what I was just going to say, which is I feel like we 
we are doing the audience a disservice uh, because we have not talked about James Hydric and what he looks like yet. That is a good point. Andrew, what does James Hydric look like? So as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, he's he's like a he's a good old boy. So he has this kind of what, what he's from Virginia. Is that what you said? No, South Carolina, South Carolina. So, yeah, he has like, he has like this this southern accent. He he sounds to me like Matthew McConaughey a little bit. Um, I think Matthew McConaughey is from Texas, but it still reminds me of it. Except and he, and he kind of has that look. He, he's he's not handsome like Matthew McConaughey, but he has that like you know, uh, good old boy, Southern kind of gangly, uh, look to him. Um, however, he has a very peculiar, uh, Prince Valiant bowl cut that, you know, it looks like, um, it, it looks like, uh, Anton Segura's hair from No Country for Old Men. That, it, it, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. It's a little shorter. It's just, it's just a couple inches shorter, but yeah, it's very Anton Segura. And then he has this buzz, this very strange, vaguely like Eastern martial art mystical, like smock on. I can't even, like, I don't even know how you describe it. Yeah, it's 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 like a you know, it's like it's not a gi. It's not uh you know, it's you know, it's a white person's idea of what they should be wearing for like, you know, Chinese ceremonial garb of some kind. Yeah, but it's just so bizarre cuz it's not even any attempt at like making it look authentic. It just it looks like a it looks like a like a like a costume of a like vaguely racist like uh you know asian character in some movie in the 70s yeah i think the way i would describe it is james hydrick looks like the type of guy who tries to get in a fight at, with somebody at a bar and then gets hit once in the face and shits himself yeah james hydrick looks like you would be walking out of a movie theater after having seen a late show and then he would just pop out of a dumpster and try to get you to buy magic mushrooms from him James Hydrick looks like the type of guy who got expelled from school uh, because he was a senior with only three weeks left before he graduated and he started dating a middle schooler. James Hydrick looks like a guy who would be at your weed dealer's house every single time you went over there to pick it up. And every time you went over there, he would be like meditating. And then he would like, as you were sitting, wait, like your, your weed dealer would go off into another room to like get, get it. And at, and you would have to awkwardly sit there as he just like ranted to you about weird, like law of attraction, like the secret bullshit for like 30 minutes. James Hydrick looks like the type of guy who his only way of bonding with people is to put on the Muppet show and ask if they want to get twisted. James Hydrick looks like he was a high school theater teacher until they found out that he was dating the lead actress in the play he was putting on. James Hydrick looks like the type of guy who you go to Thanksgiving with your family and you have that one rich uncle and James Hydrick is like your youngest sister's boyfriend who's 10 years older than you are. And he's trying to convince your uncle to give him money so he can start a uh, a business renting out merry-go-rounds or carnival carnival machinery in general. Yeah, James Hydrick looks like if you were like making a super low budget like indie movie and you were just like shoestringing the whole thing and you had this like grand vision for it being this big like apocalypse now style like war movie but you just had no money but then you had like this friend who just like knew he's like I know a guy like every every role that you would need in a movie he's like I know a guy and he would just bring in all these weird ragtag people to like do all these jobs there would be people who were like the craft service and there would be people who were grips and who would like were lighting and they were all just these rogues gallery of just weirdos that that your friend knows from like different jobs he's worked and some of them he just met at the bus station one night and then James Hydrick looks like he's the guy who he brought in to do all the explosives <laughs> yep that was a long that was a long walk to get there but yes James that's that one wins it James Hydrick looks like the guy who does all the explosives on low budget movies yes um, so before we watch the rest of this clip, I just want to kind of make something clear. So basically, James Hydrick has been bumming around with these martial arts schools. He's gotten a little bit of social clout. 
he's started doing this uh this thing of pretending that he's a psychic and he's going around on all these tv shows he's featured on like three or four tv shows in in rapid succession throughout the 1970s and then it climaxes on this show that we're watching called uh what's my line i think is what it's called and uh Bob Barker is the host. So this this guy this this guy he's been talking to this whole thing whole, this whole time is Bob Barker. Yeah, and he's also on another show called That's Incredible with Dick Clark and he, a couple other shows. And so basically, he becomes this kind of like social curiosity where people are kind of like, I don't know, maybe he is psychic. I don't know. And in rapid succession, he's then confronted by various psychic and or magician disprover style investigators. People people that are like their life's work is um, proving that these motherfuckers are liars. And James Randi is one of those guys who is about to come out and interact with James Heydrich. And um, uh, yeah, let's let's watch the rest of this clip. Did, did I do a good job of setting that up? Yeah, I mean, it's and, it, and it's it's really interesting, too, because, you know, as we're going to see, we're going to see this right now. And I, th- I think, you know, the thing that I think whenever I watch these debunking videos, which I've seen tons of them, um, and, I, and I've seen this, I've seen this James Heydrich, um, you know, video for I, I saw this years ago and I've seen tons of other other ones like this. Most of them are from like the 70s and some of them are even from more like the 90s. And the the really fascinating thing that I think is um, the immediate thing I start to think about and I think a lot of people probably think about it too is like you see them come on these shows and they get debunked so easily and they're just made such a fool of and it's like how did how did you think this was going to go any different like that's that's the, the thought you think is like how did you not realize that like why did you agree to this why did you agree to come on this thing on national television and have somebody who's like specializes in debunking um uh, psychics, mediums, and uh, spiritual grifters, and why did you agree to allow them to put you through the test? Like, how did you not realize it was going to go exactly this way, and you were going to be exposed in this way on national television? And I think it really is. And and some of them, some of them are smarter than that. Some of some of these these uh, these fake psychics and grifters and things like that, they're smarter than that, and they do they they do avoid these things. They avoid. Um, being challenged, they avoid going head to head with debunkers. They, they, they circumnavigate any attempt at trying to debunk them or to get them to prove what they're doing is real because they know that they would expose them. But a lot of these people, they just don't. They go on these things and it's like, why? How did you, what did you think was going to happen? And I think it's a testament to the fact that these people, they've built this grift. And they've gone around and they've done these things and they've showed people and, you know, chaos magic, power of suggestion, craft your own reality. They because they're getting all of this positive feedback and they're doing these things and people are wowed by it, it becomes real to them. And because they're doing these things, it starts off as like they know that it's bullshit. But then whenever they get this feedback and they get these people being like, oh, my God, they start to genuinely believe it. And then they are fooled by their own grift. By the time James Heydrich goes on this show and agrees to have the amazing Randy, a.k.a. James Randy, come out and test him. By this point, he fully believes that he has these powers. And so he thinks that he is not going to be exposed by James Randy. It's like a weird trap that they back themselves into. James, that pencil definitely moved. Now, is it true that you can also turn the pages of this telephone directory? Yes, it is. And you will do that for us? I'll try. Should I take the pencil off the table? Yes. All right. There you are, James. You would like to open it to any page, or should you want me to do it? I'll be happy to. Hmm. So now he's kneeling down next to the phone book. Bob Barker's just put a phone book paper, uh, open on the little table in front of him. He's doing the same little miming thing of like pretending to channel his chi or whatever the fuck he's doing. And part of his act is like going through the motions or miming okay. that like he's having trouble. It's not just a confident, like, I just sit down and do it. He goes through the whole act of he's having difficulty getting to the right place. And then he does it. And he and he and uh, one of the pages of the phone book flips without him touching it. James, you 
But but part of the mastery is that he doesn't just sit down and do it. He builds up to it by like going through this act of like, ah, oh, I'm trying. I can't get there. My mind is blocked. My chi is not flowing properly. Ah, oh, I can't. And then oh, I I got it. I got it. And then he does it. Like that's part of the mastery of it. So uh, so he does this on this thing. Um, and so what's gonna about to happen is they're about to bring out uh James Randy, aka the Amazing Randy. And essentially, you know, if you don't know, uh, the Amazing Randy is he is a uh, a magician who throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and even up to recently, um, he actually just died. Uh, like late 2020, um, he he just passed away, and he was doing this debunking, you know, up until his death, pretty much. Um, he was a guy who went around, and basically his mission was that he wanted. He was a skeptic who realized that a lot of the tricks used by these fake psychics were just sleight of hand and magic tricks that he was well versed in because he was a ma- magician. So he made it his mission of I, I want to travel the country exposing these frauds and basically they're taking advantage of people they're getting money from people who are paying for their classes or like coming to shows to see them he's 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 ripping people off and i'm going to go around exposing these people so that they can't rip people off anymore so he had a thing where throughout his entire career he had an offer of if you can prove to me that your power whatever it is is real if we if we if we subject it to a test of my own design and if you can stump me and prove definitively that your power is real then you win a million dollars and that number shifted throughout the years i think it was a million dollars and then it eventually became like five million dollars um but it was like if you can prove your power is real you get a million dollars but i'm going to subject you to a series of tests to to um you know to stress test your power and you know make sure that it's actually legit and you know spoiler alert nobody was ever able to win that a million dollars and certainly not James Heydrich, but we're going to see that right now. Demonstrations, you did these same demonstrations on That's Incredible. Yes, I did. And as you know, the amazing Randy maintains that you did not use psychic power, but that it was trickery. Hmm. And he is prepared to pay you $10,000 if you can do it using psychic power. Later in our show, you two will meet Head to head, and we will test your psychic powers to the nth degree. And I know that you at home are not going to want to miss that. You must understand that when he was making that page move, he knew he was under the gun. He was being observed carefully. He would not wear a microphone. He wanted the overhead microphone, the boom microphone, to follow him around, pick up any sounds with the microphone such as this around his neck his gimmick might have been given away immediately the point is it took them about 25 minutes or so to get him to turn that page so it's all condensed you'll even notice that the book shifts position rather dramatically from the edge further in on the table at one point that's an edit but it's quite innocently done they just cut 25 minutes down to a matter of 40 seconds or so but there was a long period of time during which he did this and when you see him try it under my conditions it was a full 45 minutes they actually let the audience go out to take a lunch break and come back in again during that period you won't see that cut in the tape you'll just see sort of a dissolve but let's go ahead with it Once again, here is the man who claims to have psychic powers, James Heydrich. James, welcome back to our stage. You did a most impressive demonstration earlier in our show. If you saw it, I'm sure you were impressed. If you did not, let me explain that James moved a pencil without touching it and James turned the page of a telephone directory without touching it. And you claim to have done that with psychic power. Yes. Now, you're prepared to demonstrate your psychic powers again. You've warmed up. You're ready to go, are you, James? Mm -hmm. Very well. Let's welcome back a man who has made a name for himself as a master trickster and the author of Flim Flam, The Amazing Randy. Welcome back. 
James, Andy, Andy. Okay. Now you saw. James. You know, at this point, you know, as we're watching this video, and Bob Barker is like setting up that James Randy is going to come out. He's laying out kind of the scenario of the fact that you know James Randy thinks that he's his powers are not real. He's going to come out here and, and put him to a test and all these things. And you know, James Hydrick is just kind of standing there. So what what do you what do you see on his face? I definitely have an th- opinion, but I don't want to like influence yours. Like as as we're sitting here watching this and the look on on James Hydrick's face as Bob Barker is explaining this to him, like what do you think's going on in his mind? Hours again, you've warmed up, you're ready to go. Are you, James? Mm-hmm. Very well. Let's welcome back a man who has made a name for himself. As a what do you what do you think's going on in, in James Hydrick in old in old uh, Hydrox Cookies mind right now? That looks like the expression of a man who is walking towards uh, the guillotine with the certain confidence that he's going to escape. You know, it's that like flying in the face of all logic. I'm going to overcome this. Yeah, I, th- I think there's some element to that, but I don't even think it I don't, I don't even think it does fully have that confidence. I think when I see this, I see somebody who everything that I said before, he's he's tricked himself into believing that his bullshit is real. He's full of this cocksure confidence. He's like, I'm invincible. I actually am a psychic. I can actually do these things. Fuck it. You know, take all comers. Like, yeah, I'll go on this TV show. Yeah, I'll fucking see this guy and I'll fucking prove to him that my shit's legit. But then when he's actually up there on stage and the guy's coming out, he's suddenly like, oh, fuck. What a, what have I done? Why did I get this hairdo? Why am I on up on stage dressed like a fucking racist like caricature of an Asian person in some like slapstick comedy movie? And I'm about to like like he he's like he realizes in that moment of like this is it, this isn't real. I'm not actually a psychic. What am I doing? I'm fucked. And the best part is how the amazing Randy looks too. Like he looks like kindly Santa Claus. He looks like he looks like the after photo of Santa Claus if Santa Claus was the new mascot for Weight Watchers. Trickster and the author of Flim Flam, the amazing Randy. <laughs> Randy, welcome back. James, Andy, Andy. Okay. Now, you saw James' demonstration from backstage. Yes, I did. And do you accept that as a demonstration of psychic power, or do you believe that he used trickery? I don't accept it as a demonstration of psychic power, Bob. I think that the solution is rather simple. I think that Mr. Heydrich is merely, to accomplish this effect, blowing on both the page and on the pencil. I see. Now, you originally asked him to demonstrate in two different ways his psychic power. But as I understand it, you are now prepared to waive the demonstration with the pencil. Yes, and the reason is rather simple, because the pencil reacts to even the currents of the air conditioning in this studio. It will be very difficult to try to put controls on it in such a way that normal currents of air that are present all the time would not move the pencil. For example, it moves very, very easily. All right, you're not going to ask him to do that. That's one down, one to go, James. You are prepared to pay him. <laughs> Just fucking dollars. destroyed by Bob turn Barker. The page of the telephone directory with certain controls. That's that right. right. Mm-hmm. You have the ten thousand dollars, do you, Randy? I do indeed. It's uh, right here. I've carried this check now for going on seventeen years, Bob. Uh, there it is, a check for ten thousand dollars, awardable to the gentleman should he be able to successfully perform the demonstration. I would like to introduce our panel of judges, and our first judge here, Dr. John Palmer is a psychologist and professor of parapsychology at John F. Kennedy University. The seat right there, Dr. Palmer. We have Dr. Stephen Drake, astronomer and expert on stellar evolution at UCLA. And our third judge is Dr. Ronald Markman, assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at USC. I love how this whole thing, like... They're presenting it like, oh, we're we, we're getting this guy on, and he's showing us our powers, and oh, these are that, that's cool. You're a psychic. Um, however, you know, don't don't shoot the messenger. We 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 think you're great. 
But this guy, James Randi, he says that you're bullshit. He says that you're a fucking idiot. And he's going to come out here and like, listen, hi, hi, James Hydric, Hydri, hi, Hydra, Hydrox Cookie, Cookie Baby. Jamie, 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 James, Heidi Hides. Jamie, James, Heidi Hides. Jekyll and Hyde, we love you. You're, you are a magic man. You come out here and you have, you have, you have transfixed us with your, with your Prince Valiant hair. We, we've fallen in love with you. We've been cast under your spell. But this guy, James Randy, he's going to come out here and he has a couple little uh, blah, 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 stupid little tests, whatever. You're going to fucking ace them because you're the shit. But he's going to come out here and he's going to do these tests. And we'll, you know, just take care of that and fucking prove yourself. And then we'll go and we'll go to fucking Chuck E. Cheese and celebrate. And that's how it's like set up of like Bob Barker and the show are just like they're just a neutral party in this. And they love the spectacle. But like this guy wants to verify it. But in reality, this whole thing is just a setup. It's just a hit job. They're just like, all right, we're going to fucking destroy this guy. We're going to let him show off his shit. Bob Barker's going to be the good cop. James Randi's the bad cop. Bob Barker's going to be like, you know, he's going to be plying him with like with niceness and, you know, patting him on the back and and, you know, calling him calling him sweetheart and all this stuff like that. And he's going to he's going to set him up and then we're going to just one, two, three. It's just going to be a fucking hit. It's going to be like it's going to be like that that the that montage in The Godfather of all of the dudes being taken out in sequence. James Randi comes out. He immediately debunks the pencil thing. Bob Barker's like, one down, motherfucker. And then we're going to bring out three experts. This whole thing's a setup. And then you're dead. Like it's the whole thing is like a, is like a fucking takedown job. It's so funny to me. It's so funny to me. This like weird, like this weird dance that like the media has with these people where they like allow them, they, they, they give them this weird kayfabe benefit of the, of the doubt. Like nobody actually believes this, but we want the entertainment of it. So we're going to like talk to you as if what you're saying is legit, even though in our heads, we're just like, this person's a fucking maniac. And then we're going to destroy you for the, for the entertainment of this audience. Here's the look what they did to my boy moment. (laughs) Since my theory as yet unproven, of course, is that it's accomplished simply by blowing though rather cleverly, I must admit done. There should be a way, a simple way, without a lot of instrumentation, to demonstrate that fact by using one very simple control. Now, uh, let me just emphasize that this one control will not stop him from turning the page of the telephone directory, That's right. but you hope to the judge's satisfaction will demonstrate that he is doing it with his breath. That's correct. All right. Now, what I have here is particles... There's such a unique way when you when because I, I, i've seen tons of videos of liars being exposed on tv and whenever these grifters have a little bit more leverage there's a whole different behavior from them um where they become defensive and they're like they get really mad and they start being like this is bullshit you're trying to like you're 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 a liar they start they start trying to turn it around on the other person and like attack their character and say that they're a bad person, say that they're a piece of shit. They start defending it. They start saying all these things. But when the liar is dead to rights, whenever they've been backed into a corner where there's they're they're done, all, they, all, they, there's a whole different behavior. It's no longer defensive. It's no longer like, oh, no, this is I'm you're trying to you're you're pulling a scheme they, like there's it's no more of that they just let it wash over them. You can see it in their face. They're just like, I'm caught and all I can do is just sit here and just watch my whole life unravel. And they go into almost almost this hypnotic state where when the liar, when the person starts calling them out and being like, well, you lied at this and this is bullshit and this is bullshit. They just kind of stand there slack jawed and they're like, yeah, yeah, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Like they just, they go into a hypnotic state where they just, they, it's disassociation. Like they've, they've, they've just completely disassociated from reality because they're so fucked. Plastic, which when given a good puff, good heavy puff of air will, I think, rather conclusively show whether or not blowing is a method accomplished. Now it will not perhaps in some way. James Randi has put the, the the phone book down on the table in the same way that it was before but he's placed around it these little light like foam peanut things if you were to blow air near them they would be disturbed in a way that you that you could show that he was blowing air 
we have determined in the experiments. Very well. Are you ready to proceed? I am indeed. Judges, you're ready? James? Ready. He says, shitting himself. He's doing his bullshit mumbo-jumbo, like, vaguely mystic hand motions. His psychic maneuvering is the equivalent to David Carradine's kung fu. Yeah, for sure. He's kneeled down on the ground, and he's making it seem like he's concentrating on trying to figure out how to access his chi. But really, right now, he is a man. All eyes are on him, and he's like, how do I unfuck myself? (laughs) What are those shoes he's wearing? I don't know. I don't understand his outfit in the slightest. Look at the intensity that his... uh... It looks like a little kid's Halloween costume. Yeah, it's made of the same material, yeah. Of, like, racist China man costume. This time, how many many pages? Just one page, once. This time and once more. Now, James, you had another question. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What is it? What would you like to ask? Okay. The styrofoam and the lights form electricity which pulls the page... Look. This, this is the saddest part. It's 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 so hard to you gotta see. I mean, I would recommend you watch this video, but like it's so hard to convey this without seeing it. But it's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's so pathetic and so sad. He's try. He he calls Bob Barker over, and Bob Barker, you know, he 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 looks up from spaying his cat, and he he walks over. And he says, he's like, what's, what's wrong? And he says, the, the styrofoam, the, the packing peanuts and the lights, their, their energies are causing an electrical field that's holding down the page so that he can't move it with his psychic powers, which is like, obviously like a fucking improv, like on the spot bullshit thing he's coming up with. But the pathetic part is he tries to demonstrate that the electrical field is holding the page down. And so he lifts up the page and what he's trying to do is he's trying to show him that like when he lifts up the page and when he drops it, the page just immediately like falls flat to try to say that it's being held down. But when he does it, it doesn't work. He's like, he's like the, the, the electrical field is holding down the page and he lifts it up and then the page just stays in the air and then falls back to where it's supposed to go. Like it, like it, the, the page turns. And so he says this thing, which is obviously total bullshit, and he tries to demonstrate it, and then it doesn't work. And so he's just standing there with his fucking pants down, like, oh, shit, like, that thing I just said, it didn't work at all. And, like, what do I do now? What what do I fucking do? He's down. Instead of and he's trying to, like, pages. push right. it back. And, uh, what would you like to ask us? Oh, it's so hard to, to watch. Randy to allow you to do or for me to, to do. either take something else either lighter or something that is going to keep that isn't going to form like static electricity you mean put something else some other material around something here that is not foam foam causes static electricity and the light is what heats it up all right randy is there anything else that you can put around the telephone directory i've heard the question but the question is not valid because it's making an assumption which is not true the foam does not in any way create static electricity and Mr. Heydrich, in demonstrating that the pages were clinging together, didn't demonstrate it to my satisfaction. I think uh, we could perhaps ask the judges for their opinion on that. I am not a scientist, so I'm not qualified to declare on it. Yeah, they they didn't clean together at all. Whatever static electricity exists in the styrofoam would not really affect the movement of the page or the clinging of the pages together. This is a hit job. It's a fucking hit job. It's in fact psychic functioning. I don't really see why that would make a difference. Very well. Randy, would you allow me... Can you imagine... There's so, there's a part of me that feels guilty for taking such pleasure in this because it's so beautiful. It's like <laughs> this is this is your version of like this is your version of watching cuck porn or something where you're just like yeah like I am fully cucked. You're like secondhand scientific witness cuck. I don't know if I'm cucked for James Hydrick. I don't know if I'm cucked for James Randy. I don't know if I'm cucked for Bob Barker. I don't know who I'm cucked for, but I'm fully cucked right now. Like full cuck. It's so beautiful. It's like biting into, it's like as, as a vegetarian, it's like biting into the finest, juiciest, most tender steak, but knowing that it's not even actually real meat and that it's still vegetarian. Like that's what it is, <laughs> but like not that impossible meat bullshit. Like it, it's like it tastes real, but you simultaneously know that it's not. 
because it's, it's like it's a fucking hit job i just love it so much because like imagine if they did this setup for like every fucking bullshit liar asshole out there who comes out and like makes these bullshit claims and says like you know that that fucking pillow guy just like i've got mountains of proof that the election was rigged and I'm going to reveal it all. And if they just like, they're like, okay, cool, cool pillow guy. Uh, yeah, come on this show. You know, you're going to sit here. Um, Bob Barker is going to come out and he's going to, you know, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to pat you on the back and we're going to let you give your little proof. And then we're going to rush out like four just like fucking doctors and scientists and fucking experts on like political systems and voting machines. And then they're just going to destroy you systematically. Like, just just imagine a world where they they just put on a show like this for every fucking bullshit artist. It's called Comeuppance, the TV show. It's just such a delightful fantasy. Like, I just I just love this so much that they just destroy this guy. Perhaps half a dozen pages and then put them back. Uh, oh yes, you may do that, please, that James. I'll just lift up one, two. Lift them in a bunch, if you would, uh, Bob. Just take about a quarter of an inch of them. All right, there, yeah, like them. that. That's fine. Gently place them down gently so it doesn't disturb the phone. I know. Uh, well, oh, I thought you. Oh, the other way. Them. Yeah, the other way. That's what I thought you meant. Would that sure be helpful to you? The static is going to still be here because of the phone. See, that's well, what I'm it saying. is the opinion of the judges that there is not enough static formed by the the foam to be a problem. So, uh, under the conditions agreed upon it uh, would seem that now you should at least try with psychic power to turn the page of the telephone directory james okay <laughs> okay okay god what are those shoes it's so weird it's the most satisfying video in the world to watch he just he's just sitting there concentrating but now he's got like a little like smile on his face like where he's just like I I'm I'm fucked guys like this is it he's doing his weird mystic bullshit waving his hands and nothing's happening because it's all a lie <laughs> nothing nothing fuck you James Hydra he raises his hands so to, uh, and just like shakes his head well have you reached the point then when uh, at, at which we can declare the demonstration terminated this isn't a magician's trick. I can't just come up, bang, bang, and it's over. I have to be to where I can work with something small and then big, you know, to build up my own self. So this well, is, you know, the, it isn't uh, a trick. It has to be done, you know, this is just, it's power. It's, it's mental power. The conditions agreed upon have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we can't change the conditions now in midstream. So in the opinion of our judges here, you have not seen a demonstration of psychic power, have you? Yes, that's correct. You have not. The Beige Brigade. <laughs> uh, Just obviously. these fucking nerds that they trot out to, There's like, destroy this guy. With this it's all in matching beige suits. Now, you have heard what uh, James's explanation is. Do you have any comment to make on that? Bob, the, the comment very briefly is that I have gone through many hundreds of these tests with many hundreds of people who claim to have psychic powers. And quite frankly, it's more or less the same story every time. When a simple, direct, very uncomplicated protocol is used and the control is applied, the psychic forces don't seem to be present, if indeed they are ever present at all. I still look for some sort of evidence of psychic powers. To date, I have not found any. Up to this very moment, I am still totally unconvinced. Judges, do you have any further comment to make? You agree that you have not seen a psychic demonstration? Uh, yes, I, I would agree that I have not seen a psychic demonstration. Uh, I would like to say that as a parapsychologist, I believe that there are uh, other evidence under, under control conditions that do uh, demonst demonstrate, I would think, to a reasonable person that psychic phenomena do exist, yes. but uh, obviously not in this, in this uh, demonstration. I want to thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, James Heydrich.
I want to thank you very much for coming on our show and allowing us to just utterly decimate you in every little crack of oxygen that constitutes the entirety of your life. I want to thank you for just letting us just cover you in the cosmic jizz. <laughs> Oh my god of our collective cum shot of oh my god of owning you in the in the totality of your very essence i am bob barker remember to spay and new your pets and remember to fucking destroy any bullshit psychics in your life just coat them in your cum jesus christ that got so aggressive that's the energy of it it really is bob barker's out there and he's just being a nice guy and he's just like well james he's patting him on the back and he's just he's he's turning him around and just fucking him let's watch this next clip where um so basically the arc of this is james hydrick goes on all of these shows and then eventually he fucks up and goes on, on there's a doc, a mini like movie of the week documentary made about him that he's initially really excited about. Unbeknownst to him, the point of the mini documentary is to expose him. And he does, in fact, get exposed and then confesses that he is not a psychic. Yeah. And just to give some context or some backstory to this, this documentary was made like a week after the appearance on the show, uh, What's My Line with Bob Barker and James Randi. So he's like building up and building up. He's creating this career. He's becoming known as this weird psychic guy. And then he makes like the, the one, two punch of just fucking committing career suicide of like, he goes on this show, gets fucking decimated, just, just covered in Bob Barker's cum. <laughs> my god it's so aggressive and then and then he and then like a week and then a week later he does this and he thinks that like he thinks that like he's gonna go on this and it's gonna be like a redemption like he's gonna be like oh like those guys just like fucked with me they like they bullshitted they tricked me into this thing and now i'm gonna do this thing that's like you know it's gonna show the real me it's gonna show how much of a badass i am but in reality it's another hit job he just walks into another trap they're just like, I just washed off all this Bob Barker cum. I'm showered. I'm ready to go out. and I'm, I'm ready to hit the streets. He walks out of his front door. Bucket of cum. This is so aggressive. Warren and Heydrich flew to Dallas for another taping session. On this day, Coram removed his previous restrictions. I told the sound technician to inform us that the mic levels had to be turned down due to feedback. We had a problem with the audio. We'll have to do it over. All right. With the mic obstacle eliminated, the pencils moved. Later, Heydrich attempted to transfer his pretended power through Coram. But unbeknownst to Heydrich, Coram blew on the pencil first. Heydrich was startled. <laughs> so... <laughs> So he's the documentary and the guy who's like on camera. Um, excuse me. Jack Palance is narrating this. We have to say that first. Jack fucking Palance is narrating this documentary. We got Bob Barker. He's get he's getting doused in Bob Barker's cum, and now Jack Palance is coming from out of nowhere. He's getting he's about to get palanced. And he's just palancing all over him. He's palancing right in his face. James James Hydrick's about to get Barabbased. Yep. He's doing it. They're shooting a thing where he's moving the pencils. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to transfer my power into you. And so he like blows on the guy's fingers, the, the guy's hands. And then the guy goes to um, move the pencil or like try to move the pencil. But what James Hydra doesn't know, because this whole thing is a setup. They're about to expose him. This whole thing is just a hit job. So the guy, the, the guy on camera who's doing the thing with him, who's like on screen hosting or whatever, he does the blowing technique. He knows how to do it and he does it. So whenever he, whenever James Hydrick blows on his hand and then the guy goes to move the pencil, the pencil moves. So like from James Hydrick's perspective, he like really did, like he blew on his hands and then the guy really did gain his powers. So instead of what an actual psychic with real powers would do, which is to watch this and go, yes, as it should have been. He, 
he gets this confused look on his face like what the fuck you know what he, no you know what he does he does he does the scooby doo rot roll yeah, that's what he does. He like that's the look on his face. Like you got to watch this. He he gets this screwed up like rut row look on his face. Like I was not expecting that to happen at all. Build test. Corum supplied a tank where only one corner would not meet the table flush. This corner was turned away from Hydric. The dollar bill remained motionless. The glass is so hard to work through us How about if, how about if we turn it? Maybe would that help you? Yeah. You turn yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Still- I just love how all successful. these people are coming together to fuck with this guy. Movement. And just slowly and tease him and play with him until they drop the door. fucking hammer. Trying to get to go back the other way. Coram brought the bill to life. Never knowing that Coram was a professional magician, Hydric was again bewildered. He's so confused. But the funny thing, though, is, is it's like performative. What? Like he he's really on the inside. He's like, oh, fuck, this is not good. But he's playing it off like, what? How is this happening? They put a dollar underneath a fish tank turned upside down so he can't move it. But then the other guy who he thinks is just a host, but he's actually another magician. He's able to move it. So (laughs) they're just like making it seem like his powers are bullshit. And then the host of this documentary is just an actual real psychic. Yeah, but just this thing, right? Something's not right. What? I don't know. It's gonna look. Right. It's gonna look good from here. Cut off the film. No, do you think that we're gonna do something with it? At a later taping. Is that what you're saying? That's uh, not right. Hydric is reluctant to demonstrate the page turning trick. I don't want to do it. I don't. Forget the part. He becomes that increasingly that. agitated. If, because this, I don't. I don't understand, man. This ain't cool at all. And finally, explodes. God. Makes me mad every Hydric time. and his claims of power were a destructive force. He like slams the, the table and kicks it over. An even greater threat. How did they want to use you to brainwash people? <laughs> the government contacted me. They wanted me to brainwash people. Sure, buddy. After several hours of tense and exhaustive dialogue, Coram was able to persuade Hydric to talk about his past. Coram then enlisted the help of Hugh Ainsworth, a former bureau chief for Newsweek, to verify the details of Hydric's past. The taping lasted two and a half hours and revealed not only trickery, but a life of tragedy and fantasy. Hmm? Tricked the whole world. You tricked them really good. I, do you remember? This uh, is after he, he basically confesses at this point, we? says that it's a trick, and well, then they get him to feel. talk about why. I did that to reach. It's like a hand reaching out for uh, recognition so that I can uh, later. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just wanted to be known. I needed to be recognized. All my life I've been, and I hate keeping the go back to the past. I hate to, I hate to keep going back, but I don't know. I wanted to do that because it was different. And I, I knew, I just wanted to see how open-minded people were. I wanted to see if these people were so-called intelligent and I was so-called dumb. I mean, I, surely I'm here for a reason. My, I, my whole idea behind this in the first place was to see how dumb America was, how dumb the world is. Heydrich, admitting that Coram had outwitted him, eventually agreed to demonstrate his technique. Here's practices over and over again, to where if you can show, like if I stand here and I say, okay, I'm going to move this lead, people's looking and they're waiting, so the lead moves, okay? It did move. Okay, actually it didn't move from power, it moved from something else, physical. But the can people in the audience, what? it's moved from air currents. From where? from my mouth but you can't tell it see it took so many years of practice and getting this damn path <laughs> to where you can't see it you see and okay. i have to say that to matter of fact yeah. what you did if i'm not if i'm not mistaken you would take somebody and hold their hand and you tell them to point at the leaf and you'd say now you will make the leaf move right and they believe they make it see it's but called power making- suggestion once you get a person to actually believe he can do something then he, perhaps he can do it what did you do though when you I, would hold what i hand, do this is can, not, you, can you show yeah, right now. All right, okay. let me explain what I'm doing. First of all, I'm not I'm not going like that because that can be seen. I am taking air from inside and causing it to come out in a way to where nothing here shows. And if you can get the camera on my face and you see this leaf, it moves, but my nothing here moves. You see, and what I do is I I grab the hand and I I do like this. See, 
that already, it's already moved because I can direct it in a way to where it's, wow, it's hit on right every time. In my practice, you know, I spent a year and six months in solitary confinement, and all this time I've been thinking and thinking, and I said, that's it. This and you could I'm take all the time you wanted to learn right. how to breathe and make right. it and I had, I'd spent hours and hours and hold my breath and breathing, different breathing controls, different things. So many ways, and I mean, I could... I could make deputies think someone touched them on their, their neck or something because I could breathe in a way and be looking over here and they'd, they'd feel something and I'd say, that's a ghost. And they'd <laughs> right on the floor. <laughs> they'd go running out of the place. And it's, it's something that was fascinating to me and it got me recognition. I mean, every deputy in that jail was so frightened. <laughs> that guy's uh, possessed. Yeah. I, I think that's a, we've now revealed that he is in fact a charlatan doing exactly what he said he did. But more importantly, he just dropped a little factoid there, just laid it on us, just just a little, just a little, oh yeah, I spent a year and a half in solitary confinement. And I think that's a perfect place to stop for the act break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the other twist in the story of James Heydrich, about what he was doing for a year and a half in solitary confinement. <laughs> Act two, it all gets really funny and then really sad. We just watched this thing. It's all been revealed. So, you know, you can find these videos on YouTube pretty easily. That first video, you know, just just search James Heydrich and you'll find that video of him on that show with Bob Barker where he does this thing and then the amazing Randy comes out and debunks it. And then this documentary in particular, it's called Psychic Confession. I would highly recommend watching this. It's 47 minutes long and it is fascinating. It's not an in-depth documentary with like these deep messages or themes or whatever, like a really good documentary is. It's more of like a extended news feature story. It's more of a, an investigative piece or an investigative expose, but it is so fascinating to watch. It is so fascinating to see this person going through this motion, like in real time in front of our faces, being exposed, coming to terms with the exposure realizing that he's has nowhere else to go accepting it admitting it and then code switching to this other personality which is like you got me i'm exposed and now instead of becoming this defeated person i'm gonna shift and i'm gonna become like i got you i got everybody you finally exposed me i've been tricking you motherfuckers for all this time you're all fucking idiots I've been just trying to test you to see how dumb you are. And I got away with it for this long. I won. I proved how dumb everybody is. It's simultaneously a testament to the way that these manipulative people can like switch and shift and code switch in these ways. But it's also a testament to like these reporters and the way that they were able to cajole this out of him and massage this out of him. The dynamic could have been very easily been completely different where they sit there and they're like, you're a fucking liar. We got you. Fuck you. And then just put him on the defensive and then just defeat him and turn him into this defeated small person. But instead they get buddy buddy with him and they're like, man, like, how'd you do that, man? They create this dynamic where he wants to like tell the story. He's like, man, you got to hear this. This is fucking crazy. It's so fascinating to watch this. And I just want to say this is about to get really dark. I would highly recommend you go watch this video, watch this 47 minute documentary, but more specifically, if you can, I would recommend you, you pause the podcast, go watch this now and then listen to the rest of it because you're going to have a ton of fun with this, but this story gets very not fun and it kind of paints everything a little differently. And I would recommend watching this before you get the rest of the story. Today, Heydrich is known either as one of two things, a purported psychic who exhibited a brilliant telekinetic ability or as a criminal who was charged with kidnapping, child abuse, and sexual assault. Heydrich was convicted of kidnapping and torture in 1977, for which he was imprisoned. But, like all good supervillains, he escaped three times. Want to guess how these three escape attempts went? Well, he allegedly kicked through a concrete wall, broke through gates at the South Carolina prison where he was serving time, and then eventually in 1982, he pole vaulted over a fence in a state-run prison in Utah. 
just an already just another phase. Like we're not, we're not done. We're not done. Like we've gone through this. We, that whole thing could have just been its own episode. This grifter fucking fraud charlatan gets exposed in one of the most epic ways ever. It's totally owned in national tel- on national television. We see the undoing of a man. Do, 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 do. But th- there's, a, there's this next thing where he was in jail and he escaped in these insane ways. And it's not done. Yeah, you would think pole vaulting out of prison would be the thing that would we would center an episode around. Yeah, just he pole vaulted out of prison. Do, 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 do. This has been a, this has been a Boy Genius production, but no, there's more. Throughout the 1970s, Heydrich was arrested repeatedly for crimes ranging from burglary to assault. And this is where things get really dark. After he gets exposed and uh, everything kind of comes out about him, the late 80s and early 90s were the darkest time uh, for James Heydrich and for everyone else. In 1989, James Heydrich was convicted of child molestation. He was wanted for an outstanding warrant when he was apprehended because he appeared on Sally Jesse Raphael to explain how his psychic abilities actually did work. He was sentenced to 17 years for molesting five boys in Huntington Beach, California. He served his sentence and then was remanded to the Atascadero State Hospital for treatment under the state's violent predator law. Psychologist Jesus Padilla described him as an extremely difficult patient who suffers from pedophilia, paraphilia, and antisocial personality disorder. So this dude, he, he just couldn't leave well enough alone. He did this whole thing. He got this notoriety. For these reasons that we've talked about, he, he, he gains a little bit of fame. He gets exposed on TV. He gets totally, the mask completely slips. He admits it. It kind of gets left off in this, for what happened, not too bad of a way. He kind of gets off with it by kind of pivoting and being like, I was just trying to show how dumb people are. But he can't leave it alone. And he goes on and he tries to, he's like, I got to have that, not- I got to have that recognition. I got to have it back. I got to get it back. So he tries to have like his reboot where he's like, okay, this whole thing happened in the 70s and in early 80s. But like that's Batman 1989. Let's Batman begins this shit. I'm going to go on Sally Jesse Raphael and I'm going to be like, it was all real. I'm a real I'm a real psychic. That was all bullshit. And through that very process, he gets recognized by all these kids who he was molesting throughout the 70s. Well, I don't think he said he got recognized. It's that he molested five boys in Huntington Beach and then appeared on Sally Jesse Raphael and the police were like, that's the fucking guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It wasn't recognized by the kids. It was recognized by the police specifically. You're you're absolutely right. That's what happened. So, I mean, honestly, like, there's not a lot of fun to be had during this part. It's just really fucked up and sad. Like, obviously, it's sad that he was abused as a child. Obviously, it's it's not understandable why he would do the things he did. But it's it's there's a there's a, a runway of empathy of like, oh, this this person was abused and mistreated. And because of that, they developed a hole inside of them and they figured out how to fill that hole by lying. Yeah, it it, it lays it lays track for it. It, it 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 just it shows you that there's something there it gives you it gives you a s- insight into how the cycle of trauma repeats itself it's not a it's by no means any kind of like excuse for it or like it's okay that you did that because it happened to him or like these horrible things happened to him but it shows you it shows you that the trauma the, the the cycle of trauma and how it just is a cancer in the continuity of our society in the human condition. Yeah. And um, obviously, fucking with little kids is not cool. And so because of that, we're going to look at James Heydrich's Facebook page and mock him. So this is what's super surreal about this. James Heydrich, I don't know who runs these pages for him, but James Heydrich has a Facebook page, a blog spot, and a YouTube channel. And he uploads messages and uh, missives from somebody to the public. Um, Andrew, you want to click on that portrait of what he looks like today um, in the photos section right there? What do you, what, how would you describe what James Heydrich looks like? That's from like 15 years ago. This is for, yeah, that's, that's from uh, six years ago. That's what he looks like now. 
uh i mean this is gonna be this is the this is the wor- this is the least imaginative version of the he looks like game because james hydrick looks like a pedophile <laughs> that's it that's it it's true but for the sake of this bit i'm gonna keep going that photo of james hydrick looks like matthew lillard's attempt at making a low budget oscar bait style movie oh yeah he does look like matthew lillard for he, like a hundred percent Matthew Lillard could play James Hydrick in a fucking James Hydrick movie that we should not make because yeah because fuck James Hydrick there's no reason to give like any kind of like recognition or attention to this person no matter how interesting the story is yeah fuck this dude James Hydrick looks like he went on a shooting spree at a mall after failing the uh police academy for the 20th time <laughs> yeah James Hydrick looks like the type of guy who breeds pit bulls for the explicit purpose of dogfighting and then gets arrested and no one in the neighborhood is surprised. James Hydrick looks like he's eaten at the same little corner street diner for the last 20 years. Every time he goes there, he orders the exact same thing. All the wait staff knows him. They don't know anything about his past. but they're, So they're just like this guy that's been coming here for 20 years. And they say, you know, they say, hey, James, they give him his regular order. He's very amicable with everybody. But the whole time he's there, he's jerking off under the table. James Hydrick looks like the type of guy who grew a goatee in order to hide rampant herpes on his face. I don't even I don't even know if that's something you can get on your face. I don't I don't know that that's even a thing. You can get genital herpes on your face. James Hydrick looks like he collects porcelain clown dolls. James Hydrick is the type of guy who has gift certificates that he had that he's stolen from family functions to Victoria's Secret and he goes there and goes there and, and buys women's undergarments just to keep. J- James Hydrick looks like a pedophile. <laughs> Also, this is also this is his mug shot on his Facebook page. On his Facebook page, yeah, yeah. I don't know who runs his Facebook page, but it's fucking surreal. Um, it's like a mixture of old photos of him doing martial arts stuff, footage from him being on TV in the seventies, and various updates that are kind of like sit reps of how he's doing in incarceration. Um, do you want to read that top post, the most recent post from yesterday at 3.53 a.m.? Yes, but before that, just one second, Dave. Okay, so his little his little personal info thing on the side, everybody's Facebook page, you have like all this bullshit of like where you live and what your job is and all this stuff. So job instructor owner at James Hydrick's Institute of Shaolin Kung Fu, went to Witten Center, which I guess is a college or whatever. Lives in Coalinga, California, from Salt Lake City, Utah. Relationship status, it's complicated. (laughs) It's complicated because I fucked five children and now I'm in prison for the rest of my life. The understatement of the century. People don't even use that anymore. Like people like that was like a thing that people did. People don't even use that relationship option anymore. That's just like a that was like a meme that just long ago died. And he has in 2021 this convicted pedophile. His relationship status on Facebook is it's complicated. <laughs> we live in a fucking simulation. It's so good, man. It's so good. All right, let's let's read this most recent update. So uh, yesterday at 3.53 a.m., mm-hmm. as an associate of Hydric, I will contribute some tidbits here and there for your perusal. At one point in the 80s, Hydric gained the curiosity of certain scientists who usually wanted to quantify or debunk him. Obviously, a rational response to his claims is fair. At one point, an electrical engineer and research scientist from a major university gained permission to do some scientific testing on his ability to change electrical fields. During a day's testing, we broke for lunch and went to Denny's or some similar place. I feel like you'd remember if it was Denny's or not. I'm sure you have all seen the condiment tray on the table with the salt, pepper, sugar, Tabasco, etc. I could tell James was getting annoyed at the professor's skepticism and condescension. One question under scientific inquiry was James' ability to generate heat electrically. So James grabbed one of the small Tabasco bottles on the table. He told the professor to pay attention. He then placed one finger on the top of the lid of the bottle. Within seconds, the contents were bubbling and boiling inside the bottle, and the skeptical professor was dumbstruck. He could not process what was happening in front of his own eyes. I will never forget that. 
We all touched the bottle and it was hot to touch. It happened and the professor was dumbfounded. Buzz Child. Signed, Buzz Child. Uh, how much do you want to bet that Buzz Child is James Hydrick? I don't believe, I don't believe for a second that that happened. For a second that that happened. The, the, there's one comment on this post and it's from somebody named Jin Lizzie. And they say, be aware this was still a trick. Uh, sh- uh, mischievous smiley emoji. Surely by now someone other than myself can see that Jay does enjoy doing this kind of stuff. All the same, it is good entertainment that he can provide with illusions, etc. Also, the story here is great, but hopefully there might be someone out there who can maybe help with his current situation. If so, please call him and leave a voicemail. I won't give this number or the email, but they leave a phone number and an email. That 100% is the same person. That is that is 100% the same person commenting on that, trying to get people to call James Heydrich on his in-prison voicemail line. So, so wait, so this is like some Andrew WK status bullshit? where he's like playing a character who's saying his psychic abilities are real. And then he has an alternate character who's like, well, that's actually not real, but help him get out of prison for fucking children. Yep. 100%. I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know if that's him running the James Hydric page, but this is all his idea. And there's like, this is some friend or family member of his who's doing this as a way to try and get people to interact with James because he's lonely and dying of boredom because he's a fucking pedophile. And also, so this this Facebook page is facebook.com slash Sir James Heydrich. So what is, what is the Sir part? I mean, you just, you get to, you know, there was a period of years ago where when they introduced those um, URL ending things, you could just pick what you're. So it's just, it's just, it's just like a joke, like Sir James Hydric. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the real James Hydric or, you know. Yeah. But then, there, but then there's, there's an, there's two other Facebook pages. Well, yeah, he has, that's his, that's his personal account. And then he has a James Hydric that's like a fan page and then James Hydric's Gung Fu fan page as well. Okay, yeah, so there's one this is his own Facebook page and then he has like one for him as a public figure. It's just like pictures of him and articles and stuff. And it, and he's like he's sharing like on his on his public figure page, he's sharing a gif of his appearance on the That's My Line show where he got exposed as a fraud. And the top and the top comment is that's the show where you got exposed as a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah and then the other one is just it's a it's a facebook page for his his dojo that doesn't exist anymore it doesn't exist and then he also has a blog spot which we can look at briefly um james which is also run by the same person um whether that's him or some other person you know in his orbit um who would like this is so fucking weird who are these fans? Who would want like it's like if you have questions for James, he's like a just a pedophile, like just full stop. Not even a pedophile because a pedophile, technically a pedophile is somebody who just has an attraction for kids. He's a pet arrest. He has committed the crimes. And it's like been proven. There's not like, oh, I've, you know, it's not like an R. Kelly thing of like, they're lying. Like, it's just, it's proven. And he's been in prison for all these years. Wait, are you saying that R. Kelly isn't a piece of shit? No, I'm saying he claims that they're lying. Oh, okay. That, but like, there's no, there's not even like that, like bullshit layer of ambiguity. Like he's just full on a convicted pedophile. Like R. Kelly still has to go through his criminal trial. He was convicted and is in prison for it. Who are these fans? I mean, it's it, it's him. Whether it's another person doing it all, like it's him. He's the one who's like, I should have a blog. I got to get my story out there. This is so fucking weird. Yep. This is a handwritten letter from James um, uh, about the living conditions in the, the prison that he's currently in. It was posted Friday, August 13th, 2021. Um, it, I mean, the, the weirdest thing about this, and I think the thing we, we don't really need to go through the whole blog. It, you know what it is. It's just ramblings and... Um, oh, wait, look, look at the author. Look at the author photo. I am a man who has made a mistake. Oh, no, 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 right there on the right. About James, I am a man who has made a mistake or made mistakes in life, and I've learned from those mistakes. While I cannot change the past, I can strive to be better in the future. I am a person who has served prison time for my crimes. I did not. Oh, for for crimes I did not commit. Okay, so I, I guess he is doing the R. Kelly thing. The state got its conviction through forced use of antipsychotic drugs. After serving 10 years in prison on false charges, I was placed in a shadow prison in 1998, uncharged. 
accused of nothing and held to this day for a crime I might commit in the future. You tell a man he is something less than a man and say it often enough and even he will believe it. The price he pays is easy to see. The price you pay is hidden, but it is just as deep. James Heydrich. So his so his pitch is help me get out of prison because if I don't get out of prison soon, I'm going to turn into a real pedophile. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is so weird. This is so weird. What the fuck? Like, I get, like, it's so weird because I get, like, these people who become obsessed with, like, serial killers and murderers and, like, the, you know, all the 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 groupies for Charles Manson and, and um you know, whenever he was alive and, you know, the, the obsession that people get with people, with, you know, these people like, um, like Ted Bundy and and John uh, John Wayne Gacy whenever they were alive and in prison and then these people who like these 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 women who just like became obsessed with the Boston bomber and thought he was like a, a, you know a you know so a, so hot and then they, they they would like write letters to him and say that he should be let out of jail because he's hot and hot people don't be, deserve to be in jail like I understand the that truly fucked up like obsession. Like I like I I get that. Like I'm not saying I get it as in as in it's understandable, but I can see that happening. I can see people with like mental illness or who are just like so they have so many just cultural blind spots that they don't realize just how fucked up what they're saying is becoming obsessed with these people who are just like irredeemable murderers. But I I thought that everybody just universally agreed that pedophiles were just the worst. Like, I can't imagine anybody being a fan of this guy. So this is the first post on this blog is actually fairly recent. The first post is uh, from Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. Which is funny because I feel like blogs were officially dead by 2020. But whoever had the idea to help him try and get his word, the word out about his false crimes. He started the, he started this blog like last year at the end of the year. So the first post says, it's basically the same as his bio. The first post is, welcome to the official blog of James Heydrich. Thanks for stopping by James Heydrich's official blog. Uh, which we hope might help inform the public about civil commitment, indefinite and pre-crime detention, and also the abominable commission, the, uh, the abominable conditions in the Coalinga State Hospital, DSHC. James has been civilly committed for 28 years. This is involuntary detain, uh, detainment, literally, quote unquote, in case he should af- uh, offend again in the future. James' prison sentence and parole were completed years ago. The state of California just keeps holding him on a bunch, uh, uh, on a hunch that he might commit a crime at some point in the future. At the moment, COVID-19 is absolutely out of control in DSHC. Many of the patients there, including James, are older and have pre-existing health conditions. So they're at extreme risk of becoming seriously ill or dying from COVID-19. The thing is, these people, James included, have families and loved ones on the outside who care about them. DS at DS. H. Koalinga is a shadow prison. The majority of the people who are civilly committed to Koalinga will die there. For general information on DSH Koalinga, please visit this link. A link here. Uh, for a brief yet informative look at, at a bit of what actually goes on at DSH Koalinga, please visit and then a bunch of other stuff. This is so... So he basically started this blog because he's scared that he's going to die of COVID-19. Yeah, which is which is like that that happened a lot. There's there's a bunch of um I mean I'm sure there's a bunch of just prison prisoners in general that did this that we just don't know about because they're just regular people, but there was a bunch of high profile criminals who made pleas to be like let out because of fears of COVID-19, which is not a pop not a pop if you look into any of these true crime Facebook groups is not a popular thing. Like these people, like they would love nothing more than for James Heydrich to get COVID-19 and die, which as we've, as we've talked about before on the show m- multiple times, I have no sympathy for, for James Heydrich. I don't really care if I, I think he should be in jail. He's that, that what he did is just truly awful. Um, but I also don't like take pleasure in the idea of thinking him, of him dying or something. So in, uh, in, in, you know, we've, we've heard a lot of, uh, him talking in the seventies. Um, let's play this quote of him talking about the Delta variant, um, that he uploaded from, from prison. Yeah. This shit's recent. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm glad we waited to do this episode because this shit, like, when we first talked about doing this episode, like it was before any of this. It was before the blog. It was before any of this shit. The message coming from the belly of the beast, 
Queen State Hospital, Shadow Prison. Um, the way the Delta virus is um, being carried, uh, uh, someone who's vaccinated can just walk that right into the facility here um, and not have any symptoms and infect a large number of individuals. Um, I suspect that there will be at least, at a minimum, 200 deaths at Klinga State Hospital, Klinga Prison, or whatever you want to call it, uh, this year as a result of this Delta virus and the hospital's inability to prevent it from being introduced into the facility. Um, we're, we're doomed if, if something can't be done. The governor's executive order is still standing that they waive commitments, meaning that they can release some of us who are vulnerable to this disease, but they are releasing everybody except our commitment. Um, which is showing clear and convincing prejudice towards our commitment. We're a, a hated class for no reason. The only reason we're here is because of something we might do in the future. It makes no sense. We have no outstanding charges. We're not accused of anything uh, other than having a mental disorder. And this, those uh, disorders are exaggerated. Because one doctor will say you don't have one, and the state doctor will say you do. How's that possible? You either have one or you don't. Anyway, fucking weird. Fucking weird. I love how James Hydrick is like, listen, I'm a I'm a fucking psychic. I can manipulate the electrical currents in the atmosphere with my mind. I can move objects using nothing but the power of my own telekinetic energy. But this COVID shit's serious. <laughs> we need to fucking listen to the doctors. This shit is a real thing. James Heydrich petitioned for release in May of 2013, but his trial was a hung jury. He's been remanded to the Colinga State Hospital ever since. I really hope that his trial, he shows up to the trial, and it's just Bob Barker. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, Fuck. Uh, Andrew, do you have, uh, I mean, I know we've talked a lot about this guy. We've gone frame by frame through these documentaries about him. I think we both are very clear about our thoughts and what a fucking charlatan and a rapist and a piece of shit this guy is. But do you have any closing thoughts that you have not expressed yet? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I, 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 uh, I watched and enjoyed this whole thing. I've, I've watched the the James Randi exposed video, the documentary. I had watched that multiple times before I knew about the pedophile thing. So I had this whole other life of loving these videos and just being so fascinated by them and just being like, man, this this dude just got fucking destroyed. And it's just so fascinating watching the the evolution of him accepting and then admitting that he's a fraud. I've never seen anything like it. Like there's just there's there's rare instances of somebody's like undoing being captured on film in like a in such a clinical way. And so I was always just like, I fucking love I fucking love James Heydrich. I love this. I love everything about this. I love how he gets destroyed. I love his whole weird bullshit with the Prince Valiant haircut and this like dollar store Halloween costume he wears. And then like. And then I had this whole other second act of just like I found out about that part. Um, because and actually I found out about it because um a, a YouTuber that I watch and really like, um, Super Eye Patch Wolf, who's a guy who does um video essays on anime and video games, and he did it. He did a video essay about uh, a couple of notable fake martial artists, and in that video he did the James Hydric thing, and I was like, oh, I fucking love James Hydric. And then he's just like, the, the music gets dramatic. And then he's like, then James Heydrich was exposed as being a pedophile who molested five. And I was like, what the fuck? 
it was cr- it's fucking crazy there's it, it th- this story is just it, it's so insane how there's just like these these and it's not like it's not like John McAfee where it's like, oh, John McAfee's life was fucking nuts and a million things happened. It's not really like that because that was just like this dude is like a crazy eccentric and he just put himself into harms and troubles way so many times. And he was just a maniac and he did all these cr- all this crazy shit and just got himself into trouble so many times. And he just had this story life. It's not like that. Like that's like you can trace that all back to him and you can be like the reason why the story is crazy is because John McAfee is a fucking maniac. But this is like this is dis- this is distinctly different. This is like I can't believe that these two different things are part of his life. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's just going back to that idea that we were talking about earlier. Of it's just so apparent the cyclical nature of trauma and how uh, how those you have to be a really exemplary type of person to break that chain to really move past what has been done to you. And know that your impulses are wrong and take corrective measures to not do those things. Um, And it's heartbreaking because it fucked up the entirety of James Heydrich's life. It fucked up the entirety of those other five boys, let alone the other people that he was in situations with, let alone his brother who got murdered by their father, let alone his teenage mother. Like, it's just it's just so sad on every level. Like, as much as we shit on the guy for looking like an idiot. Like he just had a, he just got dealt a rough fucking hand, man. And it's it's so dark and so sad, and it's not to excuse anything or say like, oh, well, you know, it's understandable because he had these horrible things happen to him. It's not an excuse at all, and I don't think anybody thinks of it as an excuse. It, you know, once once you, no matter what has happened to you, once you do something like that, you've 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 uh you've gone past the point of return, like you've. You you cannot redeem yourself after you have crossed the threshold and allowed those things to um, consume you and, you know, push you to to do the the unforgivable. So it's not of like, oh, it makes sense because X or it's understandable because X or we can forgive him because X. But it, it is it's just it's just it's just so powerfully sad to see that somebody can be brutalized and abused so thoroughly that they it's not just that they get those things it's not just that they're victimized in that way but that they can be so thoroughly abused that they will then go on to ruin their life in a whole other way and in the process hurt other people it's so sad that that is kind of how it works from a psychological standpoint, unless you have, I don't even want to say that because that's, that's, that's almost unfair. It's, it's, it's unfair to say like, unless you have the strength, unless you have the willpower, like that's not what it is. It's not that like some people are stronger than others and therefore are better and they won't do these things. That's not what it is. It's, it's, it's much more complicated than that. It's almost so complicated to the point where it's just like random luck. It's just like, maybe you'll allow your traumas to, uh, push you to commit traumas on other people and maybe you just won't maybe you'll just like fall into the you know in the pachinko game of life and just happen to fall into a like relatively well-adjusted pocket and there's really it's just it's caused by all these outside factors of your environment your upbringing the people that you expose yourself to uh no pun intended i was literally just gonna say the exact same thing uh, poor choice of words in this specific situation. Um, it's just total random chance. Then that's scary. That's like, that's fucking terrifying. And on that note, I'm Dave Baker. And I'm Andrew Price. This has been Deep Cuts. If you'd like to find me on the internet, you can do so at heydavebaker.com or at xdavebakerx on all the socials. Andrew, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me traveling across the country, tracking down the the charlatans of our world and um, bringing them into a giant studio in front of a, a crowd of hundreds and bringing out my boy Bobby Barker to just douse him and come. And you can also find me at dapricerights.com where you can get my book, Deadbolt AI Private Eye, a futuristic science fiction noir story about a robot detective and uh you can also get some of our deep cuts merch by going to deepcutspod.com clicking on the shop or you can go to bit.ly.com slash deep cuts merch 
and you can get some shirts with some cool deep cuts designs. We've got some new stickers on the site. Um, check those out. Just put them up. Um, you can get a deep cuts patch. It's the Mystery Treehouse Investigation Agency Junior Sleuth patch. You can put it on your members only jacket or your cardigan or your uh, satchel, if you if you if you will. All right, so it's that time again. Another edition of Pizza Pizza Paparizza Mimaritza Celebritza. <laughs> Compact edition. We're, do- we're gonna do a quick one this time. Uh, so this first one, uh, th- this is uh, this is another meta self referential meme referencing previous editions of the meme the Pizza Pizza Paparizza Mimaritza Celebritza. So um, a couple times on the show, on the on the uh, on these celebrates, we've talked about some memes by a certain deep cuts listener, and um, I've shouted them out, and I was calling them uh, Blas Juarez because um, I mean I won't I won't I won't throw all the blame. I I I, I look at this name and that's kind of the name that I that's the pronunciation that I just defaulted to, but I will say that. Um, uh, our boy Baby Bakes, he has actually talked to this person. I've never spoken to this person. In, I, I've spoken to them in text, but I've never spoken to them through voice. But uh, uh, they joined a Zoom hangout that Dave was doing one time, and he actually talked to this person in person, and he pronounced it Bla- Blas Juarez to me, leading me to believe that that was the correct pronunciation. Yes, it, it is. It is my fault. It is 100% my fault. Uh, that is you threw me under the bus um so we shouted out this this meme creator slash deep cuts listener uh and i pronounced their name blas juarez but the that their name is actually pronounced blas juarez and so blas created a meme and it is a picture of uh dean norris aka hank schrader from uh, breaking bad also wait did you just say blas Blas Juarez again. Juarez is the right way. That I didn't get that one wrong. But look at what he said. If you want to get accurate, it's Blas Juarez. But that, well, that's that's the, the that's the like per- correct. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I'm, I, yes, okay. The way that white people say it is Juarez, and that's the way I said it. It's the name of a of a city in Mexico that uh, Blas is actually from, or no, he's. He's either he's from El Paso and El Paso is a border town with Juarez and he has family members that live in Juarez. And if you were to pronounce it the correct way, it's Juarez, but I'm, I'm just going to say it the white way. Um, but yes, technically it's Blas Juarez, but I sound ridiculous saying that. So I'm going to say Juarez. Uh, so yeah, the, the meme is Dean Norris, a.k.a. Hank Schrader. And he the first panel of it's a picture of him and he's smiling with like really even lighting and it says the text says i get mentioned twice on the podcast and then the other panel is another picture of dean norris but the lighting is like moody and kind of he's underlit and it looks like kind of noir lighting and he's frowning he's got like a graven fate look on his face he almost looks he just looks like a you know like a a, a gnarled um, film noir villain character, and it says Papa Price mis- mispronounced my name both times. <laughs> Solid. I'm gonna go uh, seven pizzas. Seven pizzas. The 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 Bloss special. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, this one is by uh, re- uh repeat deep cuts memer Mike Miller. <laughs> It was a, the, the craziest possible way to pronounce Mike Miller, but yes, Mike Miller. Um, and it's it's the it's the meme template of the three people sitting in a church where there's one person sitting in a pew, and then behind them there's a person pointing a gun at them, and then behind them there's a person pointing a gun at them, and then from a balcony in the church there's a sniper who's got a, a rifle pointed down at all three of them. Um, And then, you know, each person has like a name on them and it's supposed to be like, you think that you're the shit, but this person's got the drop on you. But then that person thinks of the shit, but then somebody else has the drop on them. That's that's what the meme is supposed to mean. But this version of it in reference to a bit we talked about in the Air Pirates episode where we we talked about an idea for making a movie of the Air Pirates where Nick Cage plays every character in this court battle. So in this meme, all four people, the person in the front, the second person pointing a gun, the third person pointing a gun, and the sniper, the text on on them all says Nick Cage, 
which I think is a very a very clever use of the meme format. Yeah, love this one, Fellini. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nine for me. It's a it's a full it's a full Elijah Wood because <laughs> he he was the voice of that character in that movie. In nine. the movie nine, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and then the final one for this week. The final one. Oh man! <laughs> oh, man, is it fair though? Is it fair? To rank your own meme because this is so solid that like it's definitely a conflict of interest and it's definitely nepotism and it's definitely corrupt and I definitely don't care. <laughs> All right, so I'll, since it's your meme, I'll explain it. This is the uh, the planet Earth with the two astronauts meme um, where you know you have planet Earth and then an astronaut looking at planet Earth thinking something and then another astronaut behind them holding a gun and the punchline is always has been with that last astronaut. So the meme is me looking at a planet made of Chiquita bananas and I'm saying you mean they're all Chiquita? And then the astronaut behind me is got Dan O'Neill's head photoshopped on him and he's holding a Chiquita in place of the gun. And the astronaut says, always has been. And to me, this might be the funniest thing you've ever made. <laughs> so I'm going to go, uh, I mean, I'm going to go, honestly, I think I got to go 10. Like I laughed so hard when I saw this. <laughs> It's just, it's so perfect because it's like, it's, I mean, I could have, I could have made this meme without Dan O'Neill's head and the, and the banana. Like it could have just been the astronaut and it would have worked as a meme, but it, the added layer that it is Dan O'Neill and he's holding a Chiquito banana as a gun, like he was in real life in the story that we were telling where we discover that you don't know what Chiquito ban- bananas are. It just really, it pushes it over the, over the edge. Yeah, it's really good. Um, my vote for this week's, I've completely forgot what this segment is called, Pizza, Pizza, Paparizza, Mimaritza, Celebritza is unfortunately riddled with nepotism, horribly, horribly, uh, swayed in your direction, but I'm, I'm going to go vote Papa Pricey for this one. Listen, you can protest in the streets. You can hold up your hashtag stop the steal, uh, signs. You can say it was rigged. You can create an entire conspiracy theory movement called Chiquita Anon about how there's a deep state that's controlling the interests of the Pizza Pizza Paparizza Mimaritza Celebritza judge panel. You can you can cry corruption all you want, but I won, motherfuckers. I'm the champion. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I invented the game. I know how to play it. Cuts is a production by Boy Genius Media. If you'd like to find this show and others like it, please visit boygeniusmedia.com or deepcutspod.com. If you want to join in on post-episode discussions, please join the Deep Cuts Podcast Facebook group. Finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel for additional video content. The incidental music for this episode was created by the Dead Boy Detectives.